Okay. All righty. Praise the Lord. Next week, while everybody's getting back to their seats, let me announce next week we're looking really forward to the service here on Wednesday night. Miss Linda Murray is going to be bringing the mail with her story. We're so excited about that. Brother Gerald Claybo is going to be carrying the mail with the word next week. And Miss Eileen, where's Miss Eileen? Back there she is. She's going to be doing the music for us next week. So we got a great, great team set up for next week. So stretch your hand forward this way, if you will. Let's bless this offering. Pray for Brother Ronnie. Ask God to let this thing dissolve in a hurry. Father, we love you so very much. Lord, we thank you for the offerings that are in these baskets. Lord, I pray that you will bless it abundantly that you'll multiply it before it's counted and father that you'll multiply the blessings back to each giver lord that every one of their needs might be met and for those that are here tonight that couldn't give lord i pray that you'd make provisions for them the next time lord so that they may be able to share in your blessings and in your great love we appreciate you so much we pray for pastor ronnie we believe in you god we're trusting that no plague shall come nigh our dwelling Lord, we're trusting in your promises that they're yea and amen. And God, we're looking with great anticipation to see the great glory that you're going to get out of this report. Father, we're trusting in you and believing in you and asking you to minister to Pastor Ronnie in the name of Jesus. Let this be gone quicker than it came. In Jesus' name, and everyone shouted, amen. amen. All right, Brother Donnie, would you come on up? Brother Donnie, this is... His time to tell his story. Is Addie not in here tonight? Oh, there she comes. Now, I'm just wondering if Addie's going to do any amening tonight. Y'all pay attention to see if Addie gives any amens. If you remember correctly, Addie gave her testimony, and Donnie didn't agree with it. So I said, okay, we'll bring Donnie up and give his testimony and see if Addie agrees with it. So... Hopefully, Donnie won't have to go home with any of y'all after service tonight. Started rumors. <laughs> I love you, buddy. There's nobody I know out there. <laughs> so I guess I better shut up. Uh, I'm going to look over here to my left. I see these two lovely people that I've probably been in church with for probably 35 years. Uh, I remember back when we was at South Haven, Dale was my Sunday school teacher. And uh, I don't know what Teresa was. I think she had a bunch of 10 year olds to put up with. <clears throat> but uh, I'll start out this way. I do love my wife, even though she may run me off after tonight. Uh, I drove my truck so I, I could get home. <laughs> but. Uh, Addie's probably taught Sunday school for, I don't know, maybe 30 years, somewhere in that neighborhood. And uh, I uh, I guess I'll start this out as uh, I got a 
a wonderful family. I've got a, a daughter, which sometimes I wonder about, but I've got a son that uh, he does the tithing message, and uh, he's a Sunday school teacher, and he's probably the best kid that anybody in the world could ever have. But uh, getting married here pretty soon, so we'll have to pray for him a bunch. But <laughs> in uh, about 1970, we lived in Atlanta, Georgia, outside of Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, I was, I wanted to be a carpenter, so I went to a carpenter's apprenticeship school. And I was a union carpenter for about nine years. Uh, and then those nine years, back in about, oh, maybe, 73, we started going to Church of God. We went to Church of God in Duluth, Georgia. It was probably some of the best days of Addie and I's life. We uh, we were young then, a whole lot younger than I am now. About probably 45 years younger anyway. Uh, but uh, during this time, we joined the church, and uh, we were in a choir. We had a youth choir a young choir, I won't say youth, of probably about 30 people. And we traveled all over the country down there in Georgia, uh, singing on Friday nights and Saturday nights and occasionally on Sunday. And in the summertime, we would uh, take a week, I took a week's vacation, and uh, we went on a tour. And we'd go to churches all down in South Georgia and Mississippi and around. And it was it was really really joyful. I mean, I'm not saying that church isn't joyful now, but back then when you were young, it's a whole lot different. But we'll travel on from that. Uh, back, uh, I guess it was in '76, somewhere around that time. Uh, Addie wanted to move back home, and uh, I had this wonderful job, make good money. Blowed a lot of money, but uh, I told her one weekend I came in. We were wor I was working in South Carolina, and I told her, "I said you sell the house." I said, "We'll move back home." Well, knowing to me that she sold the house in about two weeks, and uh, we had to move, and I moved from Atlanta back to Maryville. Didn't have a job. Didn't have thoughts of a job, and. Uh, it was a shock. I was used to having money, didn't have any. So I found around, tried to find a job. I found a, a, a job as a union carpenter in Knoxville. Didn't pay half of what I made in Atlanta. But I tried it for a while. Well, lo and behold, everything worked out. And uh, we were working, and uh, the man we worked for, he was a, he was a Christian. And... Uh, he he done a lot of different things. He been, we work. I worked for acoustical ceiling outfit to start with, but he done a lot of hot tire roofing, which I never wanted to do. I wouldn't do. And he was working in Knoxville, and uh, they were taking the metal off a roof, and he got into power lines and electrocuted him. So I was out of a job again. So back on the road I went. I went back to work for an outfit I worked for in Atlanta. They sent us to. Palaka, Florida, of all places, and I worked for a while, traveled, we was always gone, we worked 10 days, come home four, and uh, you know, it's not much of a life, so one day, my brother called me, he said, I think I can find you a job here as a carpenter, I said, well, okay, so I went to work for a company, and uh, they were a good company, it was called I'm going to lose my mind again. I went to work for Quality Insulation in Knoxville. And uh, I'd done carpenter work uh, through the TVA program. God bless us all. I'd never want to have to do that again. But uh, I made a living doing it. And things got better as time went on. The good Lord took care of me again. I got a job as a foreman with the same company. A, a good job. And it lasted off oh, quite a few years. Then, along down the line, my 
manager got kind of moved out and they moved in a bunch of new people. And my boss came in one day and told me, he said, hey, I want you to go into sales. And uh, sales is not nothing that I can handle, mm. I thought. Well, I've done it for 20-something years. but And it, it, was a, it was a decent job. And, of course, you know, you can tell I didn't starve to death. But uh, the Lord took care of us again. Well, I was probably, I don't know, I got all these notes. Can't keep up with them. Uh, I don't know what year it was no more. About around 19, oh, maybe 96, somewhere along there. you have to ask Eddie because I can't keep up with dates. I was going to work one morning, and I, like a lot of people, went to work real early. And it was dark, and it was raining. I went over a hill. I lost control of a little pickup truck. Uh, went off the side of the hill. Totaled the truck, and me too. Uh, of course, again, the good Lord took care of me. I had a broke back. Uh, I ended up in the hospital for about 45 days. Uh, during all this time, I didn't really know a lot because I was too bad at pain. Well, the insurance company and the workman's comp outfit were having a battle over who was going to pay my doctor bills, which was over $300,000, which everybody knows I ain't got that kind of money. I got about $3, I think, and I got that earlier today. But anyway, like I say, God took over. He took care of me. I made it through it all, and life goes on. We went back to work. Well, the company I worked for was bought out by another company, which most people don't like buyouts, and I'm number one. I didn't care for it, but we decided we'd go in business, me and two other gentlemen. Well, we did. Probably the biggest mistake I ever made in my life. And got somebody back there in the back grinning with me. Uh, probably within five years, I lost more money than I made. Uh, but we still made it. Addie worked, so we still had money. Says, Good Lord took care of us again. And then I ended up going back to work for the same company I started with. And, uh, I worked there for, oh, maybe a year, year and a half. And I, I really enjoyed the job, but they wanted to put more on me than I would partake of. And I got mad one day, and I quit. And they told me I couldn't, but I did anyway. And then I retired. But uh, getting on back to the church, uh, I, uh, not like a lot of people, I'm... I'm real bashful when it's getting up here. Uh, I can look around and see a lot of people that ain't, especially this one over here that ain't got no hair. But uh, I'm about halfway scared to death, and Dale, Dale knows that. That's the reason why he made me do this, to, to, to let everybody know that I was a carrot. But anyway, I want to tell you, I truly love the Lord. I, I really, really love this church. There's a lot of fine people here, except for Gerald. And uh, I'm going to shut up because somebody else needs to speak. So I'm going to give it back to him. Thank you. Give him a big hand tonight. Good job, Don. Thank you, buddy. I love you. Praise the Lord. I appreciate you. Man, I remember Don and Addie back at South Haven Church of God and. Uh, Donnie's been a friend, and Addie has too, all these years. And it's really good to have friends, isn't it? Man, friends. I heard a man say one time, and, and uh, Derek, if you'll begin to make your way on up. By the way, it's good to have your mother-in-law here tonight, Miss Sharon's mama. We appreciate you coming tonight, and uh, uh, you're going to get to preach to your mother-in-law tonight. Now, most everybody say their mother-in-law preaches to them. So, so <laughs> okay. Praise the Lord. But anyhow, 
It's, it's so good to have friends. There was a man told me one time, and I've said this before, but he said, if when you die, if you have enough friends to fill up one hand of fingers, you've been very successful. If you have five good friends when you die, you've had a good, full, successful life. And a lot of people say, well, you know, I got a, 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 I got a, a world full of friends. Everybody's my friend. Well, be careful. True friends are hard to come by. Donnie and Addie have been real friends to Teresa and I, and we really appreciate you guys. Love you and all our heart. Derek, preach us the word tonight, will you? I am, I am hungry. I'm, I'm hungry for the word. Well, get over there and get ready to get fed. Preach us, brother. This has nothing to do with me. This is all the Lord right here. Donnie said that he's not brave to get up here and... and, and a lot of you don't know, there's a few in here, especially Sharon remembers my first time I ever spoke on this stage. Pastor called me on a Thursday and asked me to do an offering message on Sunday, and, and it was one of those God things, and I knew it because the Tuesday before, God had given me an offering message, and, I, and I'm not a public speaker. I've never done this, scared to death of it, just like, like Donnie said he was. Couldn't do it, so I come in that Sunday morning, and I've got everything planned out, and the first thing they do is they're going to do a skit that morning, and they move the podium. So now, to you, that may not be a big deal, but, 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 but for me, that's a big deal because I had to stand here and hold it. And, 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 I, and anybody that saw me preach, speak before, you know I don't stand still. I don't do good at it, ma'am. I, I ain't got it in me. So I stood here, and I literally done this. I, I mean, literally, shit. It was, it was awful. Well, when I got back, I got back to my seat. I, for real, I was about in tears. And I told Sharon, I said, I'll never do that again. She said, you've done a good job. If God tells you to speak again, speak again. And I said, no, I'll speak again. But I said, I will never get up there for the Lord and shake like that again. If he has called me up there to do something, he's with me. He's got it. This is him. This is not me. So I will never let fear in front of people stop me from doing that again. And so far, so good. Now, I might change my mind here in a minute and get scared on you. So, so before we start this now, I, I want everybody to stand up just a minute. Okay, I want everybody to just stand up just a minute, all right? Everybody look to your left. Everybody look to your right. All right, so now you're used to me preaching because you're going to do that all night. Everybody sit back down, okay? All right. And the, and the first thing I want to start with, and I, and I used to always do this before I spoke, was, was I, I thanked everybody for being here. I thanked you, thank you for keeping your appointment because whether you realize it or not, this, when, I believe that when you get up to speak for the Lord, that you do something for the Lord. I, I believe that pastor asked me to do this because God had an appointment for me. But even more so important, you had an appointment tonight, whether you realized it or not to be, and you made it. See, there's a lot of empty seats here, and there's a lot of people that are not here for different reasons. There's people that are sick and can't be here that want to be here. There's people that could be here, and, and Stacy, they were just too tired. I understand it. There's people that just flat out didn't want to come. They had an appointment tonight, but they just didn't want to do it. So you, if, if nothing else was accomplished in your life today, you kept your appointment with God. And I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for taking the time because it is a blessing to me that, that, that you guys are still here. You've seen the pastor said, come up and let's get this going that you didn't walk out. And, and I mean that. That may sound funny, but that means something to me that, that, that you would take time to listen. So I've been working on this message for a bit, and, 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 and I really, it, 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 it's kind of been all over the place in paper. I've been telling Sharon about it, and, and sometimes when you, when, when you speak or you do a message, sometimes, sometimes you argue with the Lord about it, right? Sometimes you, you don't know, but, but I'm just trusting that He's going to deliver tonight. And I want to start with, Micah, do you care to put my picture up there first, the picture I got for us? Who is that, guys? Now, I'm kind of weird that way. I love some Fred Flintstone. But this picture struck me. So if you've ever watched the closing scene in, in the Flintstones, Fred puts the cat out. The cat runs back in, puts Fred out, shuts the door, and Fred can't get back in, right? So what got me on this picture is, is, is I thought this picture, and again, my, my mind works different, guys, okay? It, it really does. But I felt like this picture described Christians today because he is standing there beating on the door, 
and directly to his right is a gaping hole in the wall that he could go through. Now, now am I not right? But, 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 but we as Christian people, are we not standing here beating on the door of the world when God has given us a gaping hole to walk in to fix our problems, but we refuse to look at it? We will stand there and beat the door and beat the door and beat the door when the Word of God will never return void. The title of my message tonight is Caution is Not Cowardly. The Word of God teaches us that we're, we're to be bold. But I think that, 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 that above our boldness, that everything that you and I should do should be done in love. It should be done with grace. It, was, it should be done with the same mercy that we're shown. And I think that in today's society, in this world that we're living in right now, I feel like that we're failing in that somehow. And I feel like we're failing that way because somehow there's something that we've developed inside of ourselves that we want to be so right, so bad, that, that, that we, we just we stick with that point, that, that it's my way, no way. And, 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 and this is a spiritual war that we're fighting, guys. It's a spiritual war, but we've turned it into this fleshly thing. We've turned it into our feelings and our emotions and, 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 and our reactions, and, our, and, and, and it's completely changed the landscape of things. So the scripture I'm going to use is Ephesians 5. I'm going to start at verse 15 and go through verse 17. Father God, I, I ask you tonight, Lord, to, to be with me, Lord. Father, I ask you to be with this service tonight, Lord. Father, I ask most of all, God, that you would lead, that you would guide, that you would direct, that you would be that light to my feet, that lamp to my path, Lord God, for each person in here tonight, Father, that, Lord, I know that your word says that it would never return void unto you, and that's all I'm asking for tonight, Lord, that don't make this about me. Don't make this about any person in this room, Lord. Make this about the truth of your word, Lord God. Father, I'm asking that, 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 that you hide me behind your cross, Lord, that I speak nothing that's not of you, from you, or about you, Lord. Father, that each person here be as absorbent as a sponge, Lord God, and receive this word. I love you and praise you in the name above all names, the sweet name of Jesus. Amen. Ephesians 5, starting at verse 15, it says, See then that you walk circumspectly. Everybody say circumspectly. Not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what is the will of the Lord. That is the hardest thing for you and I to do in this world, is to understand what the will of the Lord is. Now, it's clear, but we just don't pick up on it. So I started reading this scripture, and I got into that word circumspectly. Now, now if, if you look circumspectly up in Webster's, it says, careful to consider all circumstances. Now, in that case, it's easy for you, you and I to walk circumspectly. So, if I walk to the edge of this stage, I'm careful to consider that I'm not that graceful. I may be a little heavy. Shut up, Bob. Don't know nothing. And I realize that I need to watch my step when I step there because I could fall, Gerald, and I could break my neck, right? We do that. We're, we're good at that. But when I look this up in the Greek, that word means perfect. Ow! See, there, there's always more meaning to God's word when we get to, get to researching it. But, but it says, so, so let's look at it this way. See then that you walk perfectly, not as fools. See, we're not allowed to mess up. Isn't that kind of sad? The world is watching you and I with a microscope, every little bitty tiny move that we've made. We're in a war here. We're in a spiritual war, and the battle plan has changed. Did you ever think, Stacy, that you would see a time in America that they were tearing down monuments? Did you ever see, think that you would see a time that people would be allowed to ta attack you at an intersection and not go to jail? Did you ever think that, 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 that you would see a time that, that police officers that were doing their job, that, that, that had their own weapon taken away and fired upon them, would be charged with murder for killing that person that attacked them. This is serious, guys. This is the most serious thing ever. But times are changing. 
Things are different now. But see, the one thing that's not changing, that, 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 that in my opinion, a lot of us Christians are not changing. Now, I don't mean change as far as moving away from the Word of God. If anything, we need to move closer and closer and closer and closer right now, closer than we've ever been. We've got to get a game plan. We've got to rethink how we've done it. You, you know, really, Christians have been spoiled for a lot of years, Pastor. And, and, and why is that? Well, here's the, the cold hard truth of it. We've been the majority. You know, and, 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 and humanity has been more respectful. So people that, even did, that, that didn't even agree with Christianity would accept it because they had this respectful attitude of it. And, 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 and Jeremy, you and I could agree to disagree, but we're not that way anymore. If you don't think like I do, you're wrong. If you don't think like I do, you're a bigot. If you don't think like I do, you're a racist. So we've got spoiled because we have accepted this because and we've, we've sat on our tails and we've let things lie and we've not defended what was our freedom in this country. We have not stood up for ourselves. We've not done it. So now we're behind the eight ball trying to catch up. And you know what the real fact of it is? A lot of us don't know how to catch up. We don't know how to do it. So we've got to develop a battle plan. We've got to be bold. But we've got to use caution. And caution is not cowardly. The first thing that I want to tell you guys tonight is... Understand that changing your battle plan does not change your mission. Do not let this world trick you into thinking that, that because you look at things a different way, that you're wrong. Okay? We have still got the same mission. People have asked me the question a lot of times, like, what's the number one objective of a Christian? And, I, I, and, and, and I've asked that question back to people, and I've had people to tell me, well... It, it, it's, 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 to, it's to save people. And, and I automatically respond is, I can't save anybody. H how's that my objective? I can't, Gerald, I can't get you saved. Lord, let, Angela's tried that for how many years now? Man, yeah, me and her can't do that. We'll never be able to do that, folks. But you know what? You and I can be the example. We can set the plan forth. We can, we can be the leaders. We can be the warriors that walk them down that path that show them who is the one that can save them. So, but the path we take them on is changing. The destination is not changing, but the path that we get them there is changing, guys. We can't do this like we've always done it. Let's look at wars, for example. World War I, or excuse me, let's go to the Civil War. So you've all seen these videos, seen movies and stuff where the red coats were coming from this side and the blue coats were coming from this side. And, 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 and these suckers, Stacy, got, got like within these two rows of each other and they named guns and started firing, right? Well, I've always thought, man, them suckers is brave. But they idiots. I mean, why we fight a battle like that? Well, see, the reason they fought a battle like that, that was the distance of their weapon. That's as far as their weapon would fire, so it didn't do them any good to stay on each side of a building or each side of the woods to fire at each other. They had to get face-to-face -face because of the limitations of their weapons. So then what happens? Memo technology changes, okay? We'll go to World War I. Well, guess what? They started fighting in foxholes. Somebody said, I made a gun a little bit better, so you boys ain't got to stand face-to-face -face no more. Let's get down this hole and let's hide. Now, was them hiding, was that cowardly? No. They, were, they, were they any less brave than the Civil War soldiers? I, I don't think so. I think they were using what was given them. I think that they had this opportunity to, to save themselves and still do the same mission, but they were better equipped to do that mission. So then we go to World War II. So now we've got really good machines, right? We've got airplanes, <coughs> we've got tanks, we've got larger armies. Were they any less brave than the guys in World War I? Absolutely not. But see, as the world changes, these wars change with technology, then, then at the same time, our spiritual war has changed with technology too. Okay? Now, in 1955... 
RC, do you remember that day? I think it, you were telling me this story. June 20th, 1955, you got on Facebook and, and, and you blasted your neighbor, you know, because of, of something. Yeah. You, you remember that happening? No, we didn't have to do that. It was a totally different situation, right? So, see, here, here's, it's, it, technology has now made our spiritual war tougher. See, it used to be that the devil hid. But I want to tell you something, folks. I don't think he hides anymore. I think he's right out in the open in front of us. I think he's right out because, you know what? He's got more soldiers on his side coming in, so he doesn't have to hide. Listen, you, 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 you may not agree with me. We can debate it. We're not supposed to debate these things, but we can. But all, all I have to do is, is I left my phone. Open up a smartphone and show you in three minutes. I can show you that he's blatantly open out in the streets of our country right now showing his face, seeking, looking around, seeing who he can devour. We can't fight these battles the same way. You cannot support wrong and try to make the world right. You cannot do it, guys. We want to do it. We want to make things. But you cannot support what is wrong in this world and try to make, the thing, try to make things right. We try to save people by convincing them with things like memes and slogans. You, you know, we're, we're, we're in, in this contest right now of, of, of black lives matter or white lives matter. Well, I want to tell you all something. If you're a Christian person, you shouldn't even be debating this. Because you know what? It doesn't matter. I serve a God that is colorblind. And, and, and you having a contest over who God supports? You cannot do that, people. You can't do it. You can't even get drawn into that. We, we try to change people's minds with, with, with slogans like, you fly your flag, I'll fly mine. Well, it's not drawing anybody to you because there's, all it is is creating confrontation and you and I as Christian folks have to see this. Hatred breeds hatred every single time. You will never draw anybody into the love of Jesus with any kind of hate, any kind of negativity. Does that mean that we, we back down on our principles? No, it does not. But we've got to learn how to love more. Do you think arguing will change anything? No. It's not going to. If anything, it always makes it worse. Because, again, we live in this society that, that if you go against me, if you go against what I believe, then, then, then you're, 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 you're being unfair to me. You're being negative to me. Pastor preached about it there. A few days back about it's time we bust some people's butts, some kids' butts. We're dealing with a bunch of kids that ain't had their tail warped right now. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just being real with you, you know. You know what time out was in my house? That was a time you spent unconscious in the floor and knocked out when you didn't do what the old man said. If you got sent time out in my house, it was a bad thing, you know. And, and I'm not condoned, like Pastor said, I'm not condoning beating kids, but, but we cannot, we cannot... Do what we're doing to this world by allowing what we're allowing because you hurt my feelings. 2 Timothy 2, starting at verse 23. It says, But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach. And oh my goodness, that last word, Pastor. Patient. Oh my goodness. I was thinking about how impatient Lily and my granddaughter, oh man, she's in this stage right now. If you don't do what, she's 15 months old, and if you don't do what she wants when she wants it done, she goes, Wah! and you don't respond, you get, Wah! And I was looking at her. She was in the middle of the floor doing it the other day. And, 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 and man, I'm telling she's in my heart. But I don't put up with it. And I looked at her and I said, you know, I, I don't know if you're ready to go protest. 
you're acting like it. You know, I don't know if you're fixing to go knock the windows out of my car or, you know, me and Sharon have a 12-foot cross in our front yard. Maybe you're going to go pull it down. But I'm not changing for you. Right? Why is that? Because she sees that I give in, then I get this more. And that's exactly where we're at right now. But, you know, I can choose to blow up at her. I, I can choose to to argue with her over the, the, these little things. We can choose to argue with people. We, we, we can, you know, I, 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 I was I always told with, with Haley, my oldest daughter, I have a story one time, had a, a, a man I used to go to lunch with every Wednesday. His name was B.T. Barnett. He was a real blessing in mine and Sharon's life. B.T. was 98 years old when he died. We go to dinner, uh, go to lunch every Wednesday, he, he and I had another friend, and B.T. never said anything. He was the quietest man. I just loved him. So Haley had, kind of, Haley had this beautiful blonde hair like her mama, real long, and, and she was 14 years old, and she come home, she dyed her hair blue. Man, I mean to tell you, you know, and this is the big tattooed guy that's worried about a kid with blue hair. <laughs> but this is how we live, okay? This is it. This is my kid. I get to do what I want. So I was at lunch, and I was fussing about it. And the BT said, pick your battles. I said, what? Now, mind you, he never had kids. Never been, uh, been married twice. Both of his wives had passed, but he never had, had never had kids. He said, pick your battles, son. He said, she a good kid? I said, she's an amazing kid. He said, she make good grades? I said, she makes real good grades. He said, what's her work ethic like? I said, man, she's in the barn every morning taking care of horses. She does everything she's supposed to do. He said, then pick your battles. The blue hair is the worst thing this kid ever does. Then it's going to be all right. You know what, if your buddy on Facebook, if he posts a meme that offends you, pick your battles. You know what, it, Facebook ain't going to get you to heaven. It ain't going to get you saved. It ain't going to keep you saved. It ain't going to keep you in a job. It ain't going to do nothing. Pick your battles. Know who you're dealing with. Romans 12 and 19 said, Beloved, Never avenge yourselves, but give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. See, we get into this stable of we don't want to wait. Well, God, I'll smack this in myself. I'm going to save you some time. I know you've got a lot to worry about, Lord. I'm, I'm going to blast this in myself right here, right now. But here's how I'm going to blast him, Lord. I got him, God. I need a keyboard. I showed you. We can't do that. We've got to turn it over to the Lord when we don't know what to say, when we don't know, when we don't know what to do. We as Christians need to get back to old school war tactics. Christians need to fight like they did in the Civil War. We need to get back, Nikki, we need to get back face to face. Amen. See, we're hiding and trying to fight this battle right now. And 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 the thing about it is. You got 485 friends on Facebook? Man, how many of them sent you a Christmas gift? <laughs> Last time your mama was sick, how many of them showed up at the hospital? I've got 492 memo on Facebook. How many of my friends was at Papa's funeral? Nada. Nada. That, it's not your real friends. It's acquaintances. It's people. It, it's people that you may have known when you was young that you liked, that, that you may have went to church with one Sunday. You know, I, I, I don't, Patty, I don't want to bust your bubble, but you ain't always going to agree with church folk. We need to quit trying to get along or, or make everybody see our way with hatred behind the keyboard, hatred behind our reaction. We need to get back face-to-face, -face, Jared. What's wrong with calling somebody? If somebody offends you, what's wrong with calling them? If they got that good of a friend, I believe Stacy, you got their phone number. I mean, amen? Right, if you, if you know me, anybody, anybody here that, 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 that I'm remotely close with knows how to get a hold of me. So we've got to quit hiding that way. We've got to get face to face, and we've got to get on our knees to fight this battle. Now, the second thing I want you guys to know that is you need to know who you're letting in and you need to know who you're throwing out of your army. 
See, the military, the United States military goes to great lengths in who they hire and who they recruit. Way more now than they used to. I mean, they, they spend a lot of time. You know, used to be you just went and kind of signed up, and if you could pass a physical, you know what, and, and everything was okay, you were in. That was pretty much it. Well, now you've got to take all these tests. See, I went, I went to the military. They wasn't that careful about who they let in. <laughs> now, I'm just being real with you. I, I ain't got nothing to hide. But, you know, they sent me. I'd done all these tests, and, and y'all may not notice, but I'm a little heavy. And, and I was a little heavy then. Well, I didn't make the weight requirement. So they put in all this work in me to get me to lose some weight. I had to lose a few pounds, Pastor, before I went to the MEP Center the next morning. And, and I, had to, I had to go through all this stuff. And I went through it, and I made it, and I got in. And uh, it was a great experience right up till right up till I got thrown out. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing to hide. It is. It is. That, that was an old me. But I, I, didn't, I didn't know how to get along with people. And you know what? As cautious as they were, I snuck by that. You know, I, I done good. Done really well. I was, I was one point away from being an honor graduate in basic training. I was first in my AIT class. And, and, then, and then the real me come out. Who, who was here, the heart of me, the angry me, the, the, the me that wanted to punch you when you didn't do what I said, when you didn't respond like I did. Uh, they'd done all they could, and, 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 and I still got in. Matthew 7 and 21 says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven See, I made it into the army, but I didn't get to stay in the army because I didn't do the will of the military. I'd done the will of me. So we've got to be cautious about who we let in. Spend time with people. Get to know them. Try. How, how about this? When you're working on somebody, how about using the word and not your words? How about that? It never, it never fails. See, I got... Last week, I was telling Sharon about this. I'm in a new department at work, and, and I had three guys just kind of surround me. And, and uh, man, they started with the Christian questions. And as soon as they started coming at me, the, the first thing I'd done, I was standing there looking them dead in the eye, Brother Robert, and I was saying, I, 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 I'm being straight up with you. I said, Lord Jesus, right now in your name, I need you because I'm being attacked. And, and I need to speak the right way. I, d I don't need to speak. You need to speak for me. And, and as they were asking questions, I was hearing the questions, and I was absorbing them, but I was asking God above to take care of me because I knew I couldn't do this. Because you know what? First thing I want to do when they get questions, I want to defend them. Well, you don't, you, who are you to challenge me? That, that was in me. But you know what? And then all of a sudden, man, these sweet words started flowing out of me. And, and I almost had a praise break with them. I was standing there talking. I was answering their questions. <laughs> and I said to myself, well, Lord, I know that's you because I ain't got that in me. <laughs> Later that day, one of them come to me, and he goes, I want to thank you for your answer. I said, well, don't thank me. I said, I answered you with God's word. He said, well, that's what I mean. He said, you answered one of those questions. He said, I've been, he said, I went to Baptist church my entire life. He said, I'm 40 years old. And I went there my entire life, and nobody has ever answered that question in the manner that you did to make me understand it. And I want to say thank you. And, man, this peace came over me. I'm like, Whew. man, if I could just learn to do that every time, Stacy, Because so many times I just spoke. But in that moment, instead of using my words, I used his word. And he didn't leave me high and dry. He was there. Psalm 75, 6 through 7 says, From promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He putteth down one and sitteth up another. Psalm 55 and 21 says, His words are smooth as butter, but in his heart is war. Okay? In his heart is war. You ever had anybody trick you into something? See, that's what happened to me the other day. I was, I was, trying, to get, I was trying to get tricked into something, and they were using words. They were, they were using the right words. 
They were using kind words, but the meaning behind them, his words are smooth as butter, but as hard as war. His words are soothing as lotion, but underneath are daggers. See, this is why this is so important. We've got to understand the difference between the two. We've got to be careful who we let in to our army because we don't always know. Yeah, do, do you, are you guys aware that Jesus had somebody that betrayed him? You don't think you can be betrayed? <laughs> Come on, I mean, we're, uh, we're talking about the Son of God here. And he was betrayed. You don't think it can happen to you? You need to be careful. You need to pray about people. You don't need to just trust everything, every person that comes into your life. Just as easy as we need to be careful who we let in, we need to be careful who we kick out. We're quick to just throw people away to be done with them. Somebody says something, somebody does something, we toss them out. I, I don't know, somehow every, every time I preach, I end up preaching talking about Mike Brown because me and Mikey was just, just the epitome. Mikey had this way about him. And something that hit me today, I was sharing, sharing, sharing with Sharon, was that, that I've spoken on this many times, Pastor, that, that, that Mikey never threw me away and he always handled me with love now I want to tell you something he, he never once backed down from the word of God he never once adapted to what I was doing he never once condoned what I was doing he always handled me with love we, we have this saying and, 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 and Mamaw's been there for a lot she ain't heard a lot of my actions and a lot of my stuff doing but I, I'd show up at Mikey's house drunk and I'd say, hey, Mike, let's, let's go get one. I said, come on, let's go have a beer. He'd say, you go to church with me? I'm like, no, I ain't going to church with you. And he'd be like, no, I ain't going to have a beer with you. And so one time I asked him, I said, if I go to church with you, you have a beer with me? He goes, no, it don't work that way. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? He didn't scream out, be gone, Satan! <laughs> you know, he... he, he he handled it the right way, but he never threw me away. But what I shared with Sharon today is when I, when I started thinking about this, Mikey loved me. We've been friends since we were nine years old. But Mike done this with every person that he met. It, it never, I, it's amazing it never hit me today. I just thought, man, I was some kind of glorious shining star that he felt fit to lead to the Lord. But Mike was this way with every person that he met. I get to thinking we'd be out four-wheeling or something and... and uh, and, and people kind of be drinking and raising a little bit of cane stuff, and Mikey be standing over there. Well, actually, Mikey be standing over there because you know he was little, and he uh, and he he just be smiling. I'm like, what do you think about that mess? And every time he tell me, yeah, Jesus loves him just like he loves me and you. And that's how he handled everything. But but you know what? Mikey didn't toss me away, and 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 and. Man, I've preached a bunch of messages since he didn't toss me away. He told me one time that, uh, <laughs> he said, man, I had this vision of you being up on stage preaching. And I'm like, well, you need to get your vision checked. Uh, I'm like, and then I never forget. Uh, it wasn't certainly first time, one of the first messages I preached up here, he was in the crow's nest, and I looked up there, and he was crying like a baby. And I knew why he was crying. Because God had showed him that, and he'd seen something in me that I couldn't see in myself. But instead of tossing me away, he took the time to love me like I needed to be loved. And I'm thankful for that. And because of that, I, I, I've got to do amazing things because he didn't throw me away. A few weeks ago, I got to preach my father-in-law's funeral, which was the biggest absolute compliment that has ever been given me in my life because I've been hard on this family and I thought Jesus there ain't nobody but you that can do this let's look at Joseph in Genesis his brothers throwed him away literally <laughs> I mean literally get in the hole we're tired of hearing you enough's enough and he come back and he saved this entire nation be careful who you throw away. 
spend time with them get to know people there's a lot of seats that are empty in here because I'm going to use the word we but I, I want to tell you me because I've done it I've thrown people away I've not invested the time in them that they needed invested and you know what some of them didn't even know they needed invested in them but you know what I've been too busy or I've had too much going on in my life or I, I've had something on my mind that I couldn't dedicate the time to that person and, and, and I wonder I, I have asked God for forgiveness several times I was youth pastor here for a few and I, and I get for a while and I, I get to thinking about kids that come through my youth group that, that I don't know where they are now and, and I think to myself how many of them did I just throw away that I not just invest enough of my time I didn't invest enough of, of myself I didn't invest enough of him to keep them here and keep the seats full My last point tonight, everybody say amen. There you go. We need to know our weapons. Everybody say, we need to know our weapons and when to use them. And when to use them. As a Christian, you have got an arsenal right here. But if you do not know your arsenal... If you do not understand your weapon, Gerald, if I take, I've got a couple of guns. If I take my 22 revolver, and I'm going to kill me a big old buck, and I'm sitting there in my tree stand, Bobby, you know I love to hunt. You know I love it. Love it, love it, love it. But I'm sitting there in my tree stand, and, 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 180 yards away comes the biggest, prettiest 10 pointer I've ever seen. All I'm doing is wasting ammunition. I'm never going to hit him because I brought the wrong weapon. What it is up to you and I as Christians to do is to understand this arsenal we've got and know when to use it. Now, you can know bits and pieces and and <laughs> If Gerald comes to me and says, D, man, I'm, I'm struggling right now, and, and, and I'm hurting, and I don't know what to do, and I go, well, Gerald, you know, the Bible says that Judas went into the forest and hung himself. <laughs> I don't believe I pulled the right gun out of my arsenal. But you know how often we do that? Do you, do you know how often? That, that we we do that do you know that how often that we're dealing with people and 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 we have these angry reactions to what they're saying because we don't know what to say pull up galatians 5 we'll start at verse 16 have you got it up there okay it says i say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh Verse 17. For the flesh lust against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do that you do not do the things that you wish. See, it's 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 in the word of God. It's natural for us to want to, to fight against the spirit. It's natural for us to kind of want, and, and, and I'm gonna tell you, it becomes even more natural when this word seems unnatural to you. You're less likely to use a weapon you don't know how to use. It's okay to have a gun in your house. But if you don't know how to load it and you don't know how to chamber it, you are scared of it and you're not going to use it. It is easy to be intimidated by this because you know who wants you to be intimidated by this? Satan does. He wants you to think that you can't. If God puts a message on your heart, the first thing he's going to tell you is you can't do it. He's told me all week I can't do this. Me and Gerald had a conversation about it back there. Boy, I've struggled and fought to put this together, but, but you know what? God's with me. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the words of the flesh are evident, which are... Now, now here's where I want everybody to pay attention because, well, this is where we like to get people. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, but we kind of will skip over this one. Hatred... Because you know what? When I don't like what you do and, and, and I blast you for it 
and, 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 and I fight against you for it. That's a form of hatred. And it says hatred. It says contentions. Oh, my goodness. We have contentions because we just don't agree with each other. You don't, you don't think like I don't, like I, you don't believe like I believe, so therefore you're wrong. That's a source of contentions. It's a jealousies. Did it help? Outburst of wrath, Gerald. Can we be real with each other? Can we be honest? I had me an outburst of wrath last night. You you want to counsel right now? Or you I'm just being real. I had me one. I got angry last night. I had it. You know what? I walked off from it. I calmed down. And I got on my face before God and asked him to forgive me. Because I had just read this. <laughs> I, I had just read this. But you know what? Here, here's the good thing, Jeremy. Here's the good thing. Had I not just read this, I may not have just known that. And I might have been thought of myself because you know what Satan said to me? Boy, you got, you des he deserved that. You got him. Go get him again. And I'm like, no, devil. It says right here, I can't do that. Selfish ambitions. Dissensions. What, what are we living in this time of dissension right now, Sharon? We're all, you, you don't think like me, you don't act like me, you don't believe like me, so therefore you're wrong. I'm going this way, you go this way. Heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness. Drunkenness. We get up here and we're blasted drunk in about a second and a half. But we won't tell nobody about our spots of breath. Bobby, I see you leaving the liquor store. I'll come tell Pastor in a second on you. <laughs> I did. That's the truth. I, I, I seen Bobby at the liquor store a couple months back to see what that turns into. He was mowing. For the record, I was there with him. I stopped to talk to him. But see, we'll do that. We'll call you out for that. But I, I don't call Pastor and tell him my, I have my fits of wrath against Sharon. You, you, you see what I mean? We pick and choose what parts of this we want to live in our life, guys. And we've got to stop doing that. What we expect them to live by, we need to be living by. We need to be living by. Revelries and the like of, which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in the time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. What, what's the fruit of the Spirit? Now, I'm noticing we're missing a letter here. Shouldn't that be the fruits of the Spirit? Because we get to pick which one we want, right? Because you, you pick a fruit, right? I, I think God was purposeful here when he said, but the fruit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faith, faithfulness. It's all one big fruit. We can say, well, I love people. I'm joy. I got a new boat. And man, I've suffered long to pay for that sucker. And I'm kind. I put $12 in the offering plate last week, so I'm good. And I'm at church every Sunday, so I'm faithful. But we skipped right across peace, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. But we skip right across peace. <laughs> it's all one big old beautiful fruit. I was thinking about it. I was like, Lord, what color would that fruit be? It'd be yellow and orange and black and white and red. And it'd grow in India and it'd grow in Mexico. And this fruit tree grows here in the United States. It used to. It'd grow in Canada and Germany. You know, the Bible tells us that what we're fighting is not 
right here in front of us. It, 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 it's, it's spiritual. And, and we just read right there that, that, that the flesh fights against the spirit and the spirit fights, fights against the flesh. I was honest with you when I told you about my, my wrath a minute ago. I, I got really mad and blowed up and, you know, uh, and then, of course, the first thing the devil tells me, well, you know, Jesus got angry. And then I thought, well, he got angry and he sinned not. And I just sinned because I was mad. And I got to thinking that, that as the flesh fights against the spirit and the spirit fights against the flesh, the flesh is fighting for me not to know the spirit. And the spirit is fighting the flesh for me to know the spirit. And how am I ever going to know which is which if I don't choose a team? If I don't choose who I'm going to serve? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. How am I ever going to know that? So here's what I'm going to end with you guys tonight. Don't get into these contests. You ain't, you ain't going to win nobody in your Facebook battles. You're never going to win a soul to Jesus without loving them first. Period. Love bears all things. Love believes all things. Love hopes all things. Love endures all things. Love never fails. Everything else, the Bible's clear about it. First Corinthians chapter 13. It's clear that everything else I like the fact that it, it specifically says tongues are going to fail. But love will never fail us, guys. So whoever you're dealing with, everybody stand to their feet. Mike, if you want to go ahead and kind of dim the lights and start some music. Whoever you come in contact this week with, I want, you, I want you to look at them. Take, take a minute and think at them. No, number one, greet everybody with a smile. Because a smile always, it, it just, you, you kind of drop your guard and somebody smiles. Gerald smiled at me tonight and my heart melted. He didn't realize Angela was standing behind him, but, you know. <laughs> but a smile kind of does that. But, but here's what I want you to do. I want you to take the time. And as, there, as, as, as you're having this interaction with them, I want you to think to yourself, I wonder if anybody's loved them this week. I wonder if anybody's loved them. Because ain't nothing else going to work. It doesn't matter what they've done. It doesn't matter how they've reacted to you. It doesn't matter how they've responded to you. You, you know what? The, the truth of it is, it, it doesn't matter what they've done in the past. It doesn't matter what they've done to you, how they've tried. None of that matters because love never fails. And I'm telling you, as soldiers for Christ, as we go into battle, we have got to make a decision that we've got to change our war plan. We, we've, we've got to change how we do these things. And, 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 and with, this, with this unthoughtful boldness that we have that, that we want to tear people's hearts out, we can't do it. I just love that, that the woman caught in adultery, that, 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 that Jesus just loved her. But the coolest thing at all, he says, your sins are forgiven, go and sin no more. He didn't say, get on out of here and go back to what you was doing. Girl, I got you. He didn't say that. He said, go and sin no more. And I can't help but believe him in, in my sanctified imagination that she never done it again because she got in touch with the only one that could save her. So tonight, I want to tell you, if you're not in touch with every head bowed and every eye closed in this room, this has nothing to do with me. This is between you and Jesus right now. If you feel like that maybe, just maybe, that, that there's some person in your life or someone in your life that you've not shown the right amount of love to, slip up your hand just a little bit. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. You can slide your hands down. Now I want to ask you, because I would be remiss if I didn't ask this question, because 
I used to always think, well, that's not a salvation message. That's not this message. But let me tell you something. Every message ever preached was a salvation message if it was about Jesus Christ because that's all it's about. If there's anybody in this room that's never accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, I'd like for you to come on down. This is where you got to be bold. This is where you can't hide behind the world. But I want to ask you to come on down. If maybe you've just not been kind of getting it right and you want to redo it, come on down. We'll, we'll talk about that. We'll get you through that. Most of all, if everybody raised their hand, if there's anybody in here that wants to come up and, and that person that you raised your hand for that you want to get on your knees and you want to pray for them and you want to ask God to show you how to love them because, see, we, we try to figure out how to love people, but if we don't ask God, if we don't involve Him, then all we're doing is loving them on our own. All we're, all we're doing is, is selfishness again. So if there's anybody here that wants prayer for anything, for any reason, or you just want to pray for somebody, come on down.